What's good? How you doing? It's your girl D back with another video. So something slightly different than the content that you are used to, but as usual, if I come across something I feel like it can be helpful, I want to go ahead and share with the masses. If you were not currently aware, we are unfortunately in the state of a pandemic right now, and the Center for Disease Control is encouraging folks to wear cloth coverings on their face, some type of cloth covering, face mask, scarf, or something like that. As a result, there is a high demand for such face coverings, and supplies are short. So, because supplies are short, what can you do if you want to go out and buy the traditional materials to make a face mask or some type of cloth covering that's not going to be very secure to sit on your face if it's a regular scarf might fog up your glasses all that good stuff i decided to go ahead and scrap something and i actually had an old pair of leggings that i was given solely for the material but inside of those leggings because the average pair of leggings takes about one to two yards worth of material for both the legs as well as the actual waistband and at least depending upon your waist size um, a yard yard and a half worth of elastic so if you get you some el cheapo five dollar clearance leggings from walmart you've got enough material to make i don't know how many face masks probably a, at least fabric wise alone from these particular pants you've got enough to make a good 10 face masks you'll have to you cut enough fabric for the lining as well as the outer shell and then you've got the elastic that's here in the waistband and once you rip that out that's probably enough to make three or four pairs of face masks but if the material is a four-way stretch you can use your scraps line them up and cut them just right and you can actually use your scraps hit them with a zigzag stitch and then you can go ahead and make yourself some additional straps for your ears so we are going to do that with these leggings here that cost five dollars but this five dollars is going to help make a bunch of masks for a lot of my friends who are essential employees um, a couple family members who need them and just people who want to be better protected so here is mine that i first made the prototype and this was using a pattern that i found online and i will go ahead and give her information here and link it in the description I like it in a sense of the fact that it does cover my mouth and my nose, but because I wear my glasses predominantly, the nose part falls down. So if I have the nose part, the bridge of the nose up underneath where my, the bridge of my glasses are, then my glasses don't fog up, but then it gets hot and it fogs and everything like that. It also, because I have a big face, it doesn't cover quite everything. So I'm going to be modifying that particular pattern to make it a little bit bigger um, ultimately you want to take a measurement of your face before you do get started to see where it is that it would line up because the pattern is already based upon your um, the patterns already based upon a seam allowance anyways so this by modifying it we're going to be able to make it bigger so you can actually cover a little bit more of my chin and more of my cheeks and I also picked up wire i have seen um my friend alana up in the northeastern part of the country has been making face masks for essential employees as well as those with family and those who need to, um, those who are caretakers and she has been actually sewing a piece of ribbon to serve as a strip on the bridge of the nose and putting a small piece of wire in there um, other friends of mine who have made face masks said that they used pipe cleaners which is awesome if Walmart had pipe cleaners. The Walmart fabric and craft section is very desolate right now. So I actually found, um, went over to another part of the craft section. I found floral wire, which I've got wire cutters and you only need maybe two and a half to three inches worth of wire, if even that, for the bridge of the nose. So that's what we're going to be doing. Disassembling these, making face masks, 
both with the elastic as well as using scraps to make straps and being wonderful, good, productive people. So if you want to see how all of that goes, stay tuned after the jump. So to get started, you're going to need your sharp tools, you're going to need your rotary scissors or your fabric scissors, whatever it is that you're going to use in order to cut your fabric. I use both. A seam ripper, definitely, if you want to salvage the elastic. You need your very cheap clearance leggings from Walmart or whatever place it is that you're going to procure these leggings from, for stores, if they're still open, that kind of stuff. Um, a lot of masks need to be made out of at least 100% cotton. This is a polyester blend material. It is still breathable, but again, if supplies are short, you got to make do with what you use you need to make do with. Here's the other leggings that I got too. And again, that polyester blend, but it's still got some cotton in there. So we're going to make it work. You may need the torch if you are going to be messing with the elastic. If not, I will. So first up, you're going to snip near the elastic to go ahead and get a little bit of an opening. You need to go ahead and get it exposed. And also with your seam ripper, you want to go at this very carefully. What I found with disassembling the previous pair of leggings is that they are finished with a, what is it called? Serger. They seem to be finished with a serger, so there is a lot of thread that you need to get through. But once you get it exposed and you get to a good rhythm, it should be done in no time. This part did take a while, which is why I sped up the video. So um, if you are a slow seam ripper like I am, then I recommend putting on something in the background, Disney Plus or something like that. But again, rip at the seam and rip at it carefully so that way you don't damage the elastic because you want that to be as intact as you possibly can get. Then you're going to go, and what I like to do is I like to cut on one side of the serge part. You can take a seam ripper to the actual serge finished seam on the inside if you want to maximize as much of this fabric as you possibly can. Considering that this particular part, that serge part, I really don't have a function for, I don't care about trying to salvage it. So I'm just cutting on one side of the inseam carefully though as close to that surged part as I possibly can and I go all the way up and through the crotch and then onto the other leg When you're done with your elastic, it should look like you have, you know, a bunch of little spider ant legs and stuff like that all throughout it. And then once you get your fabric cut all the way, you'll open it up and see that you have a lot more material than what it is that you thought when you originally started. Next up, and originally in the intro, before I actually got into this, I had made the modified pattern and what I'm actually going to use the modified pattern for is for the men in my family for their faces. The pattern as it is, it's fresh off the website, she has three different sizes, one for children, one for women and teenagers, and then her men's pattern. The men's pattern that she has as is worked perfectly fine for me, but I did transfer the pattern and extended it. I transferred it to some random cardboard. You'll see my fruit by the foot box here. 
and it's two patterns, one for the inner lining and then one for the outer shell. Next, now that we have our fabric done and our elastic put to the side, it's time to go ahead and lay down the pattern pieces so that way we can go ahead and cut the fabric. I apologize for some of the orientation in this because I don't know where my real good YouTube camera is. I was recording this on my phone and had it propped up. So I am taking that pattern and using my rotary scissors in this fun little but very old and might be slightly damaged cutting mat. And I am cutting out the fabric that I need. The tutorial on the website, I believe, calls for pressing. And depending on the material that you use, that might still be necessary, at least for the most cleaned up finish. Um, on the prototype mask that I made, I found that because this material is very stretchy, you don't really need to press it. Um, but if you do use something that is 100% cotton, that's a little bit more firm, something that does not have a lot of stretch, pressing it will help to make sure that it lies flat, that it takes out all of the wrinkles and the bumps, and that way it'll be a little bit easier to sew. Now that we have our pieces cut, yay! We're going to take a, what is that, my ruler, measure, I don't even know what you call that, because it's not a cutting mat, it's a ruler, but it's a big ruler, because it's three inches wide, and it's, uh, oh yes, so we're cutting a um, three inch long and one and a half inch wide strip, that's for the nose piece, and if you have ever made a Sailor Moon, um, made a Sailor Moon glove roll, I use that same methodology for it, cutting it wide, then sewing it on an edge. And we'll get to that here a little bit later. Now what I am doing is I am lining this up and very carefully cutting the bottom hem of the pants. And that is going to serve as ear straps. Once I measured it fully after cutting that bottom hem off, that one leg is enough to make two masks, which is actually pretty nifty considering that we're just deconstructing these pants completely and making them into as many masks as I possibly can. Also, I'm going to apologize now because my laundry is going to be in the background later on. And I thought I had filmed at an angle to where it was not visible. We're too late now. So here's everything it is that we have. The elastic set aside for later. The face pieces, straps, and the nose piece. You also want to mark about a fourth of an inch inside on both sections because this when I found when I stitched my front piece the, the outer lining and the inner lining together um, if I just sewed completely up to down without leaving that little notch in there it was a little bit harder to get the bridge of the nose to be um, lined up it wasn't as sharp as a point that I wanted because of the fact that I didn't really have a good edge. So by having that little notch right there, I'll be able to line those both up and then sew all the way across without any kind of difficulty. I believe the tutorial, and I'm a terrible person because I'm, I'm the kind of person that I will look at something and I'll look at it and read through it and retain some of it. But also the way that I learn, I'm a very hands-on person. So I can read through, read, 
you know, read through tutorials do have some benefit, but I'm also a, you know, a hands-on visual person. So I need to actually try it in order for it to stick. As a result of that, I'm sure that she used pins in her original tutorial and I am not really, for something this small, I'm not really a pinning kind of person. I do use those um, little clamps to help align the nose piece in that seam to where it needed to be. And later on, I do use pins to put the nose piece for the wire, that little nose bar, to put that into place. But by lining this up with the clamps, you'll see exactly where the middle seams are and then be able to go ahead and stitch them exactly how it is that you need. Keeping the edges even. So that way the finish will be, well, I guess as good as can be. I also am just now looking at the makeup bag in the background that says, oh shit. It's a wonderful day. I did not care about anything in any kind of background at the time that I made this because I just wanted to go ahead and get it online as quickly as I could. Haha. <laughs> Total time for this particular project probably was about two hours, but this is just actually cutting the fabric and seam ripping. Once you actually rip the elastic out and you first disassemble the fabric, um, cutting up the leg seams and everything like that, once you get that part out of the way, the sewing part really does not take any kind of time at all. So now we've got everything stitched all together, top and bottom. And next up, what you're going to do is hem the outer edges. Now, you want to sew your hem in the opposite direction. Not, in, and I don't know, I'm going to try to explain this as um, well as I can. For the mask itself, those extra pieces on the end are going to be folded inward, and then that is what the strap of the mask will be looped through. But because that part of the mask itself still has, you know, it's still going to be right side up, you want to make sure that you sew your hem in the opposite way that that right side up little flap is going to be. I had messed up on that earlier. And I'll, I'll just hold it up here in a little bit. You'll see exactly what it is that I mean. Um, but it's better to hem now rather than to get the mask sewn completely and then do the strap part. And then you're like, oh snap, I messed this up. So here, here, here I am turning it right side out, inside out, right side in, whatever. And then because of that hem, that's good. Now this part I did have to film after the fact because I realized that I didn't get it on a camera like I wanted to. So what you, I have a spare face mask and what I did was I measured how long that nose bar was, which is just at three inches. So I also measured the piece of fabric that I cut for the nose bar. And originally I was just a random scrap. So now I'm going to cut it down to just over three inches, maybe three and an eighth, three and a quarter maybe, because um, the reason being is that you still need to have room to put the wire in there. The wire does need to have a little bit of wiggle room. And also, 
you want to be able to close those ends. Again, my friend Alana, the nose pieces that she's been doing have been ribbons, which has already been, you know, hemmed. You know, you don't have to worry about any of that. But this we need to get to get a little bit more creative with. This is floral wire. And again, the nose piece that I cut is three inches long. So I actually want the floral wire to be just under three inches. Originally that fabric is cut at three and an eighth, three and a quarter or something like that. But you're going to be turning that right side out, inside out, whatever. I don't understand why it's called inside out and right side in, even though the right side of the fabric is on the outside. But also at the time that I'm doing this voiceover, it is four o'clock in the morning, so I have no coherency. But either way, you still want the wire to be slightly smaller in length than the actual nose piece fabric because you want the wiggle room and the ability to have it closed up. Folding it in half, again, we're going to be treating this like it is a glove roll from Sailor Moon. And you would just do a single straight stitch all the way across. Then since we're treating it like it's a glove roll, after you do that straight stitch all the way across, you are going to very carefully, very gently, turn it inside out. Again, why? Well, you want to turn it the opposite direction so that way the right side of the fabric is exposed. And because this is a four-way stretch fabric, this is a little bit easier. But if you're using a fabric that's not stretch, you may need to use a tool like a fabric turner or something like that to help manipulate it since it's such a tiny tube. Then you want to roll the back of the seam to the back. And again, I recorded this after the fact, so that's why it's a different mask that you see in this particular clip. But you want to put the, the seam to the back so that it's not exposed. And then with your pins and your clamps, put that little piece in place for you to stitch. It is a lot easier to sew that without the metal in it and to have it lined up then to put the metal in it and then sew. You will of course need to, once you're com almost completely done, need to insert the metal inside of that little strip and seal it. Also, another good thing about using pins at this particular part is the fact that you can have that nose piece angled a little bit sharper because it's been pinned in place. So now we are going and taking the outer flap and folding that over so that way it creates a loop for our actual face hook thing thing fizzle. I'm so sorry that I have a lack of coherency right now. The strap, I suppose you could call it. I know originally I said I was going to show how to make this with elastic, but honestly I was just so excited that everything worked out the way that it did, and also, as this is an overnight hour, I did not do so. So because of the fact that I sewed because of the fact that the strap was a little bit thicker, I didn't want to risk sewing the strap in place. So I, um, so what I did was I actually sewed the outer part of the face mask first, folded that over and sewed it, and now I am using a pin to loop the strap through and bringing the two edges of that together so that way I can go ahead and fuse them. because it was a tiny piece of fabric, 
unfortunately did give me like a little bit of grief just because of how it was angled on my machine and I apologize for the like you know hyper exposure of my face but once we got it stitched then went ahead and moved it the seamed part to the inside of the mask so that way it is not visible and then just repeating the process, sewing the other side of the mask all together. Fusing the other ends of the strap after they've been looped through and all that good stuff. And of course, if you didn't already know, Please clip your threads as you go along. It looks like we have a face mask, my friends. covers up a lot more of my cheeks. It is soft. It's comfortable. I look like somebody's bougie surgeon. Yeah, that's good. I'm here for it. And adding this nose piece in is so, oh my gosh. That is fucking great. I'm sorry to cuss. I need to be very bad cussing, but adding this little nose bridge piece in, this metal part, oh man. Mm-hmm. 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 That covers more of my chin. Yes. 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 Okay. Oh. Oh my gosh, I'm really pleased with how the straps came out too. They're not too tight, but they are flush. And that was just the bottom hem of the pants. Like the fact that, that the bottom hem of each leg is enough to do the loops for two masks. And there's enough elastic to where that can be, how much was it, 35 inches? And this is like, what, six and a half? So that's just, that's another two masks each. Yeah, okay. But yeah, and then the fact that I can still use the straps to make bias and more straps if I need it. Oh my gosh. Okay, y'all. We have a winner. Mm-hmm. And I have the patterns to where I can still, this was the men's pattern off of that website, actually. So I still have, um, I've got a big face, apparently. So, um, yeah, 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 this is wonderful. So the men's pattern, um, for my face is good because the first mask that I made was based using the women's and teenagers measurement and I don't know maybe I just got big cheeks or whatever but this is so much better and so much comfortable than the last one I can breathe fine it doesn't really mess with my glasses yeah like okay Okay, so I'm gonna get the, I'm gonna start sewing up a storm 
been making masks for um, my peoples. And then I have a, when I originally um, made my, originally I made the TikTok tutorial, I shared it on my social media and said, I'm not selling these just yet, but when I do, I will let you know, I'm not gonna charge much for them. I have 20 people waiting already. So <laughs> I'm gonna be sewing quite a bit. I really am pleased with how this came out. I like the, I, I'm, some of this I made up as I was doing this, not gonna lie. And I will be honest with you, this is the first time that I put a piece of, like this is the first time that I tried the little nose barter thing. And yeah, yeah, I'm good with that. Like I'm super pleased with how that came out too. So uh, I'm gonna get started on sewing and making these and all that good stuff. And I hope that you found this video helpful. Again, I know supplies are short. You know, you can still order elastic and fun design fabric. Um, I, while I was digging around in my um, fabric scraps, found some uh, pretty nifty print fabric from when my son was in home economics. So I've got like Avengers fabric and I've got some Pokemon fabric that I'll be sending out to a couple of these people who are on the waiting list, surprising them. But other than that, I'm very pleased with how this came out. Super pleased. So um, thank you so much for watching. Um, it's been so long since I've done a YouTube video. What's the outro? Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. Ha ha! If you have any questions or suggestions, hit your girl up in the comments section. If you are new here, please feel free to hit the subscribe button. I'd love to see you back on my channel. But if you're not here for me or my shenanigans or this DIY thing, that's fine. There's an X in the corner for you to click. It's your life to get off my channel. But if you are here for my shenanigans, you're beautiful, amazing, wonderful, spectacular. And if no one else has told you, I appreciate you. Since I am spending a little bit more time at home, because of um, working from home and things of that nature. I'm gonna be predominantly focusing my efforts on getting these masks out. And then from there, um, bringing you the behind the scenes of work in progress for Obsidian. And let you know how it is that the virtual contest goes. Fingers crossed, we have five days left before the stream and seeing um, the results. And I might, for kicks and giggles, do some makeup. I don't know. I really love these glasses, by the way. They can't use any optical. But the frames are only $12. And I'm near side this shit, so all together, it's like 40 with the lenses. They're so good. All right, but you guys take care. Have a wonderful night, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.